roster models and ward staffing budgets need to be based on the care needs of patients and not the number of beds that are occupied. Having the right roster model by shift and by day of the week is the best way to provide quality patient care. The CCDM program FTE calculation is a systematic validated method for generating a recommended nursing, midwifery roster and staffing budget for each ward based on the care needs of patients. What's important about this to clinical nurses and midwives? Each individual ward has a different patient population and a different mix of staff. These two things also change over time. This is why the CCDM FTE calculation needs to be redone every 12 months for each individual ward. The calculation uses the patient acuity data generated from nurses and midwives in each ward on each shift over the previous 12-month period. This data is collected via the acuity system and is based on the professional judgment of the nurses and midwives who are delivering the care. The calculation includes the MECA entitlements and allowances. This ensures provision for all leave, professional development and other entitlements. These are built into the ward budget to allow staff to take this as they're entitled. The FTE for each ward should be recalculated annually prior to the DHB's annual budget setting process. What's included in the FTE calculation? The acuity data provides the patient demand information for the FTE calculation. Information about the staff on the ward provides the staff supply information for the calculation. The patient demand information and the staff supply information is entered into the CCDM FTE software system. This software calculates if the staffing supply could meet the patient demand over the last 12 months and then recommends a roster that will ensure this happens. This roster is then analysed by the DHB and NZNO partners to make sure it's tailored well to the individual ward, a process called roster testing. Once the roster is agreed, this roster then put forward to be included in that year's budget for the DHB and staff are employed where this is necessary to fill that roster. As we said there, the acuity data provides the patient demand information for the FTE calculation and this information comes from the nurses and midwives who are delivering the care via the trend care system. The patient demand information is made up of the direct care hours, the hours nurses spend at the bedside delivering the care. It also includes indirect patient care hours. That is the hours that nurses and midwives spend doing other tasks necessary to support the delivery of patient care, like escorting patients to x-ray for instance, or quality improvement work, checking equipment, drug counts, housekeeping tasks that are undertaken by nursing staff and midwifery staff. The other information needed for the patient demand information is adding the shift coordination hours that the ward requires over and above the hours needed for care to ensure the smooth running of the ward and patient and staff safety on a shift by shift basis. All this information when added together gives the total number of nursing or midwifery hours required for each shift on each day. Now we need to know the staffing supply hours for the FTE calculation. In New Zealand, most multiple employer collective agreements use 40 hours per week or 2,086 hours per year to represent a paid FTE. As we know, no one works the whole 2,086 paid hours per year. Within these hours, the employer must make provision for paid annual leave time, public holidays and unplanned sick leave. For the FTE calculation, all the MECA entitlements are provided for. Once this is calculated and deducted, the hours that are left are the hours the staff member actually has available to provide to the wards, nursing or midwifery workforce. So now we have both the patient demand information and the staffing supply information correct, we can now do the FTE calculation, which is patient demand hours plus extra hours required for the ward, like the charge nurse or midwife hours, 
nurse educator or any clinic hours that the ward nurse may also do, divided by the staffing hours available to the ward once all MECA entitlements have been deducted for each staff member from 2,086 hours equals the hours required to meet the patient demand. This then tells us how many FTEs the ward needs, what the roster needs to look like and what the budget for the ward needs to be so the ward can match its patient demand with the right staffing. Here's what we know. To support patient safety and care quality, ward rosters for nursing and midwifery need to be based on the care patients require rather than the number of beds occupied. The care that patients require needs to be based on nursing professional judgment and collected in the patient acuity system. The CCDM FTE calculation uses the patient acuity data to determine the right roster and the right staffing budget for every ward, every shift. This is called the base staffing design. The FTE calculation ensures all MECA entitlements are accounted for to support nurses and midwives to take the leave and education they're entitled to. For more information on the Care Capacity Demand Management Programme, go to ccdm.health.nz.